So one of the common defects that I see people asking questions about and I get emails asking me why does this happen is about null pointer exceptions in Java and this is one reason why that happens when we're writing test code. So here's some code you might be able to spot the error in here at the moment but I'm just going to run this code and we get two null pointer exceptions. Now in theory we should never have two null pointer exceptions in the same code base that we didn't know about beforehand unless we change something. By that I mean we should always be writing a test, running the test, and if there's a problem fixing it. Here I have written two tests, I've just run them for the first time and I'm getting a null pointer exception. So where do I start? Well, given that both tests are failing and they're failing for the same reason, null pointer exception, chances are this is what is throwing the null pointer. This is declared up here, but we can see it here in this setup method where adder is never used. And that's because instead of using the field, we have redeclared a variable and instantiated it. So what is being used down here is actually this, and it's not instantiated, so it's null, when we should be instantiating it in here. How else could I find this problem? If I put a breakpoint there and I debug this, when we come down to run the test, we can see that hovering over adder, adder is null. Shows down here, adder is null. So I know that adder has not been set. So this being set up here is not actually setting this. So that's the basic problem, which means that this should really be using the field. But we can see here that this before class is static. This field is not static. So had I tried to instantiate it in here, this would have shown me as a syntax error. And that's one thing that's very useful. If we can code in a way that our syntax errors point things out, rather than creating semantic errors that the syntax com compilation and highlighting can't find. So if I was doing this properly, how could I have done this? In reality, what we'd hope for is that I would only start with one test at a time. So here's the test I'm starting. And hopefully this is what my first test would look like. It's self-contained. The variable that I'm using is declared in here. Let's run that. There's no null pointer exception. This is working. I want to do more testing. So what I will do is I will just create another self-contained test. So now I have two tests that are working. Now, if I keep adding more tests in here, I'm gonna continually repeat this. This might be something that I want to avoid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna refactor this. Refactor, extract, I'm gonna extract it into a field. I've got a choice, I can extract it in a field where I initialize it as a field declaration or a constructor. Both of those seem best here. So I'm gonna do field declaration. Now look, I can delete this line. This will still work but I haven't used an at before. Very often when we're writing test code, we jump to at before class or at before to create setup. We don't always have to do that. It might make things clearer if we do, but this will work fine. So here, there's nothing static. It's final, it's being used in each of the tests. That works. So let me control Z this back. The other refactoring I can do is I can extract into a field and have it as a constructor. There we go. So it's final, we set it in here, it gets used, let's delete that line. Let's see if this runs. Now at this point, I might decide what I really want to do is have an at before method. Just because I'm using the JUnit, so I want it to be more semantics that before every test we instantiate the variable. Now, this is final. I can only set up finals in the constructor, so I've got syntax errors helping me keep control here. If I get rid of that final, then I can set that. Let's see if this runs. So I've added the semantics for JUnit after a refactoring. So the refactoring is for my just code cleanup. Then I'm adding semantics on top. But I haven't made the same mistake that I made before because I've got syntax errors guiding me and I'm working with code that I know already works. Now the issue we had before was a before class. So if I put before class in here, 
I know that this needs to be static. If I run this now, this will fail. So there's no point exception, no test run, because this needs to be static. And then we can see that this can't be referenced from a static context because this isn't static. So I need to make this static, then hopefully this will run again. And the point here is, this is what we wanted in the first place. But because we coded essentially in the wrong order, because we started with the variable, then we added the app before class, then we added the tests. What we want to do is start with tests, make your tests complete, then start removing duplication if that's what you're concerned about. Use the normal plain old Java, then add the semantics of JUnit on top. That will keep us a nice clean progression and massively cut down on the possibility for creating errors. And that's one way to avoid a null pointer exception in your code when it's caused by a very common reason, which is the redeclaration of a variable rather the instantiation of a variable that we wanted. So if you're interested in learning Java, I have a book called Java for Testers, which teaches everything from the point of view of test methods. Rather than writing an application, you're writing test code, which gets you into the basics of learning Java code very quickly. And we've got a free 70 page sample on the website, or just go straight off and buy the book in paperback and ebook. Head off to javafortesters.com.